people in San Diego uh, who are at Comic Con. Uh, our daughter Carolyn and our niece Jessica, who flew in from Washington, D.C., are at Comic Con. I've not been to Comic Con. I'm not going to Comic Con. <laughs> My daughter is somehow under the impression that I had, at some point in my life, Jay, a first copy of Batman. I don't think so. Because the first copy of Batman would be worth a lot of money. And I would not have kept it. <laughs> I would have put it up for auction. Like the guy in Ohio who discovered 1912 baseball cards and has now sold them for four million dollars. Things like that don't seem to happen to me or even to people I know. But I'm glad you're here. I remember Superman. I remember Captain Marvel. I remember the Green Hornet. Um, I remember all the superheroes. But the one superhero that I wanted to be probably more than any other was Batman. Um, it's amazing to me how all of this stuff has evolved. Um, we're a supposedly serious country, but we have this great interest, at least some people do, in comic books. It's a good thing. And our guest will tell us um, how he came to write uh, this biography of the man from the Man of Steel. Now, I know our guest because he co-wrote Kitty Dukakis' book. And remember when Kitty was here and spoke to the City Club, the Catholic Club. And I know him from that. <clears throat> I also know him from his wonderful book on Satchel Page. Cecil Page was probably the greatest pitcher who ever lived. Cecil Page said, uh, how old would you be if you didn't know how old you were, which is a quote I like. Um, and when he was at the Boston Globe, he was one of the most highly regarded of the Globe uh, journalists and writers. And that's saying something because the Globe is, has, has a long history, Melissa, as we know, a very great of writers. Melissa Wagner was Senator Kennedy's press secretary for 10 years. So that's his story. He's done this book. He's working now on his next book will be about Bobby Kennedy. Uh, so he leads this interesting life. And now he's going to share with us how this all happened. How a serious, scholarly, very intelligent journalist decided to write about Superman. I give you the one and only Larry Todd. Thank you. I want to thank George for two things. One is, last night he rescued me. I came to town and I never had any idea what Comic-Con was like. And after standing in lines to get my credentials and seeing people who were wearing, seeing people into their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s wearing Batman and Superman costumes, not just shirts, but dressed to the T with that, George rescued me last night for a great dinner on a very far away part of town <laughs> and with people who weren't wearing Superman, Batman, and all the rest. He also gave me a wonderful George Mitrovich view of San Diego, which is a great way. I saw it in terms of what is there now, but as we drove around the city, he was giving me a sense of what used to be there over the past decades, and that is every journalist and author's dream is somebody who can see beyond just what is there. What I would love to do is take one minute in starting out and tell you where I actually launched this book. So it's a big deal in publishing where you have your first sort of coming out party. And I had, I went to a town that I never knew existed for mine. And if I had planned it, you now, in, in today's world of publishing, your book is released not when you want it to be released and not when your publisher, which in my case is Random House, a large publisher wants it to be released. It, it comes out based on when who wants it to be released. Who controls the publishing world today? Any ideas? Uh, 
Amazon. It, Steve Jobs <laughs> controlled everything, but it was Amazon.com. They tell you, in my case, they said, we want the book out not on Father's Day, but 10 days before Father's Day, so we have enough time to mail things to people for Father's Day gifts. And what they didn't know is that the official coming out was going to happen in the town of Metropolis, Illinois. Anybody ever hear of Metropolis, Illinois? Where is it? Do you know? <coughs> you did. Well, so tell us, tell them where Metropolis is. It's a dot. It Southern is a dot. Illinois. So everybody turned off their cell phone except for me, and I want to figure out how to turn <laughs> mine off here. It's a dot in Southern Illinois. It's a dot in Southern Illinois, somewhere between Champaign, Urbana, and Springfield is the best way I can describe it. Well, that's a great way to describe it. What you have to do, I want to give you a sense of how you get from Boston, where I live, to Metropolis, Illinois. You fly into Chicago, and then you take one of two flights a day from Chicago into the tiny airport in Paducah, Kentucky. When you get to Paducah, Kentucky, you hope like hell that somebody will give you a ride across the Ohio River to Metropolis because there are no buses, there are no cars, there are no cars, uh, no taxis, and no cars to rent. So I went to, say, say it again, in front of the flags. Ah, okay, in front of the flags. The, um, so I went to Metropolis, Illinois in, on June 9th, I think it was, when they were having a 30,000 person festival of only people who love Superman. It was a publisher's dream. You want a Superman book out where people are coming from all across America to this crazy little town of about 5,000 people, which looks nothing like, they, they call themselves the official home of Superman. But in fact, the town of 5,000 is nothing like, obviously, what Superman's metropolis looked like. So I got there, and there are two things I want to tell you about what happened to me in Metropolis. The first one is, that I had a talk one day in a very large auditorium, and I was there with, I don't know if anybody has ever seen the television show Smallville, but with a couple of the actors from Smallville and people who were part of this earlier show called Superboy on TV. And I was there with them, and we were having five minutes of an interesting conversation, but our large auditorium was only a third full. And suddenly, five minutes into it, this woman who was quite ancient comes in on the arms of a guy. She's holding a cane in one hand and holding onto the arm of somebody who I'd met there in Metropolis. And this guy had done something extraordinary. He had brought a woman named Noel Neal. Anybody know who is it? Lois Lane from what? The first Superman. From the first Superman what? Well, even before the first Superman TV show, the movie serials, some of the worst movies ever made in the history of mankind, the were the first Superman and the Mole Man, exactly, <laughs> where they had dwarfs who had acted, Wizard of, or, Wizard of Oz dwarfs came out of the center of the earth as mole men holding vacuum cleaners as their weapon. And it was some of the worst <laughs> filmmaking ever done in the history of the world. Noel Neal starred in those films, Superman and the Mole Man, Superman and the Atom Man. She also starred for all but one year of the famous George Reeves TV series. She is now 92 years old. She has moved back in her retirement to this town of Metropolis, Illinois, because they've got a statue of her, and they're making her into a big deal. But the first public appearance, she had broken her hip, and she was not doing well, and her first public appearance was in our talk. Now, something magical happened. She comes into this room, and this ancient lady sits down, is not saying a word, and the room that was one-third filled Suddenly, people got on their phones and were texting and using their cell phones. Within about five minutes, the room was standing room only because Noel Neal was there. They didn't come to hear me. They didn't come to hear any of the TV actors. They came to hear Noel Neal. One more thing extraordinary happened, and if they did right by me here, uh, when I was in Metropolis. So I sent in, I wanted to show you, journalists are all about showing, not telling. And I don't know whether the local Kinko Federal Express store got it right, but I sent them a picture I asked them to blow up for you, and we'll see what, what came out here. It was somebody else that I thought was quite extraordinary that I met when I was in Metropolis. And could you pull that? My super strength. Nice job. There we go. Nice job of packing it. Strength. Yeah, great. Here we go. So this is, can you see who I'm posed with here? 
This is the world's biggest Superman. He is nine feet tall. He is made of, can you get that there? I'm in front of the American flag with Superman. And he's nine feet tall, and he is made of bronze. And he's made of bronze because they tried a, a big statue there that was made of fiberglass. And everybody in town decided they wanted to test out whether Superman was truly bulletproof. So people came out with their guns and shot that statue full of holes. This one, this Superman is absolutely bulletproof. You may also recognize in the 2008 presidential campaign, the single most famous picture from that campaign was a picture that circulated around the internet of Barack Obama posed with the same Superman statue. He had, when he had run for senator from Illinois, he decided it was the perfect image to be with Superman, and that picture was literally everywhere because Superman is an extraordinary symbol of our popular culture. So what I want to do, yeah, say, it's not nine feet. Did, so if I'm six, actually, you know something, you're right. I just did a story for the Globe on my trip to Metropolis, and as a journalist, you're taught, don't remember anything you can look up. So that story has it right, and I will check. It looks, let's call it 19 feet tall. We'll call it for now 19 feet. So what I want to do is take you to the question that George asked, which is a question that everybody I know in the world, including all my old newspaper editors, asked. Why are you doing a book on a fantasy character like Superman? Why would anybody care about that? And there are two answers to that. One is the serious answer, which is after writing about Satchel Paige and after writing about somebody who probably nobody here has heard of, the um, Edward Bernays, who was the so-called father of public relations in America, and writing stories about a lot of people who were, in my mind, big heroes. I wanted to understand why America embraces the heroes that we do. Why is it that some day, one day Ted Williams is an enormous hero and the next day people are ready to throw him away? And why is it that politicians these days seem to remain as heroes for about five minutes? Barack Obama in 2008 was a hero. Today he's the president, but lots of disillusionment about things. I wanted to understand why we embrace the heroes that we do, and I decided the best way to do that was to look at a guy that I think of as the longest lived hero of the last century, and that was a guy named Superman. And I decided by looking at him, he would tell us something not just about who he was, but about who we are. What do we as Americans hold dear to our hearts? That was a serious reason. The other equally important reason was that I wanted to be 10 years old again. And Superman, for the last two years, let me be 10 years old again. We all love looking back at our first loves in terms of popular culture. And I fell in love with Superman in that George Reeves TV show that was just when I was old enough to understand what was going on in the world, he was the guy who was out there as a consummate hero. So I want to take a minute also and tell you a couple things that I found out about Superman when I was looking at him. A couple things that I'm doing a panel at Comic-Con called Super Secrets. And the things that even all these Superman crazies who are going around these people in their 50s and 60s and 70s, as I saw today, wearing their Superman shirts, people like that might not know about him. And one thing that I found out that fascinated me was that Superman, I never understood just where he came from and who the kids are, the, the young people were who invented Superman. Anybody have any idea who Superman's creators were? Siegel and Schuster. Right. Who were Siegel and Schuster? Very good. 